Thank you for joining me. Well, this time last weekend, we were talking about some brutally cold weather. Well, that has changed. And as we head into Christmas, a much different feel here, much warmer air moving in and a very rare setup where we're going to see record highs falling on Christmas Day. And those on the West Coast, California in particular, are going to see some incredibly nasty amounts of rain and heavy mountain snow. Now, this warm spell that's coming isn't going to last forever, but it will be poorly timed for those of you who are wishing for a white Christmas. I appreciate you joining me here. Uh, regardless, the weather's going to do what it's going to do. My goal here today is to inform you on what we're seeing in the weather world and how it could impact you as well. So if you could do me a favor, uh, if you could uh, follow me through the video and please subscribe if you haven't already, I'd appreciate that. Uh, we'll be probably be doing mainly uh, weekly videos right now as uh, the majority of my channel focuses more on severe weather and in particular hurricane season uh, in the Atlantic Basin. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going on here with the jet stream first. And you can see it is lifting northward and we have pulses of very intense uh, air aloft coming into the West Coast. Atmospheric rivers coming in with much above average water temperatures over the eastern and northeastern Pacific. That is fueling what we call atmospheric rivers. That is a weather term which feeds rivers of very uh, unstable air and bring moisture onto the west coast. Now, when you have air coming in from the west, rather than coming down from the poles, that tends to warm up the air quite a bit. Now, the New England and eastern Canada not really participating. There's still some very cold air uh, centered over eastern Canada and the North Pole. That is still going to be in play but the mild air is going to win out for about 85, 90% of the country. And in between, that's where we're going to be dealing with winter weather over the far northern and eastern portion of the country. But as it stands right now, Christmas Day, looking at what we call a death ridge in the weather industry, where much above average temperatures are going to take over a good chunk of the country. And then as we move on past Christmas and towards next weekend and beyond, we do start to see uh, some colder air begin to move its way back down into the country at the very end of the month and maybe a more volatile weather pattern. But uh, if you are in the southern United States, uh, it's only going to get so much colder. In fact, I think the worst cold with respect to normal is already behind us, probably for the entire winter, but at least for the month and uh, maybe some colder weather returns as we get into the month of January. Here's a look at temperatures uh, about 5,000 feet up. And you see the really cold air is bottled up across western and northern Canada. Meanwhile, we've got some very warm air aloft with respect to average, feeling more like October than December, uh, bottled up over the southwestern and central parts of the country. And that warm air continues to uh, increase in intensity. And as we get to Christmas Day, uh, we're looking at temperatures about 20 degrees Celsius above average at 5,000 feet. That is remarkable. Uh, that is 36 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than where it typically would be here for Christmas Day. And that would be centered over Nebraska, over the Western Corn Belt, into the Wheat Belt here. Uh, so incredibly warm air in place. Uh, and that is uh, also extending into the Mid-Atlantic and into the Southern United States, albeit it's not going to be quite as extreme when you get down into Florida. But it is typically mild in Florida this time of the year, uh, with some exceptions. Where is it cold? Well, you've got to go into eastern Canada, New England, and into western Canada for that. We do see a fairly sizable storm moving into the western U.S., but it is blocked. And all the cold has to go up and over this ridge into the northeast and New England, where it should start to turn quite a bit colder by the end of the month. That's the cold I was expecting was going to try to move in here around or just after Christmas. It is still coming, but it is getting blocked and pushed away into New England rather than coming down into the central and eastern United States. Uh, so the cold is fairly fleeting for those of us here, maybe in parts of the southeast, for example. And then we bounce right back here early in the month of January 2026. With all this change in the weather comes wind. And uh, we saw extremely dangerous uh, low fuel and wildfire situations in the front range of Colorado, New Mexico and Wyoming. Unfortunately, we do see winds ramping back up at the end of this weekend ahead of our next storm system. This is something to watch if you are uh, in the Denver, Boulder, Cheyenne areas, Casper as well. Uh, we do see the winds ramping up later Sunday into Monday. And then another pulse coming in uh, right around and just after Christmas where the winds could gust up to about hurricane force on the front range of Wyoming here Christmas morning. Something to keep in mind here uh, for those uh, who have interest in these areas. So we are going to be into some windy times here. 
And as we take a look at the weather map, this is from Tropical Tidbits. It is the GFS model. Uh, we see a shot of chilly air coming down briefly into the eastern United States tomorrow. We see our next storm moving into northern California, the inner mountain west here as well. And that storm is going to very quickly race through the northern U.S. and move into the Great Lakes on Monday and Monday night and then into the northeast early on Tuesday. And we will see a little bit of a mixed bag, but primarily rain for Ohio uh, snow going over to rain in western parts of Pennsylvania and, and the mountains of West Virginia and light to moderate snow falling around the Lake Ontario and Lake Erie region. So we are going to pick up a few inches of snow north and east of New York City, maybe parts of Connecticut into Massachusetts. But uh, right behind that comes warmer temperatures. So maybe a little bit of snow on the ground for Christmas morning, but uh, I would not be counting on too much uh, once you get south of the New York Thruway and, and south of Hartford, Connecticut and to the south coast here. Our eyes are going to be peeled to the west coast uh, when we get to the middle of next week, Christmas Eve, a big amount of rain coming on shore. And you can see uh, significant amounts of rain for the northern valley of California and also for the central and south coast including the L.A. Basin. And this is when flooding could certainly be a possibility uh, as we get into the morning on Wednesday with a second wave coming on Thursday, Christmas Day. Uh, at this point, uh, if you have plans to ski for Christmas, if that's your thing, it's not mine, uh, this is going to be what you love to see in the ski areas of California. We've, we've been done raw here so far. We haven't had a lot of snow yet, but this is going to get things a little bit uh, more exciting here in the coming uh, week or so across uh, places like Tahoe and some of the uh, mountainous uh, resorts here of California. We could be measuring snow and feet over the next, uh, I'd say, five, six days or so. Uh, so that storm's going to batter California. Eventually, it comes out east of the Rockies. Drier, colder air comes in later next week. And uh, we do see storms moving into the northeast, primarily rain for the mid-Atlantic um, whatever snow fell last weekend is going to be melted away. I would expect, uh, we will see this changing over to snow, of course, across the Northern Appalachian snow in new England, and it will get quite a bit colder, uh, around this time early next weekend, around the 27th or so for Northern new England, and as well as for parts of Atlantic Canada. After that, of course, our models are only going to be so good. The skill does drop off. Uh, we're, we're going to be looking at back and forth. Um, we don't see any severe weather threats for the southern United States next week. Travel should be in pretty good shape, I would expect. There's really not a whole lot of rain coming. Uh, we do need rain. Uh, we're not going to see much of that. The problems will all be pretty much in the west, and then we will have transitional issues in parts of the Ohio Valley, northeast, and into Atlantic Canada, and as well as across uh, the Dakotas, uh, northern Montana, where we have had a fair amount of snow and some blizzard conditions in recent days. We will again be dealing with snow here on Christmas morning, uh, right along the U.S.-Canadian border, anywhere from Regina, Saskatchewan, down towards Grand Forks and Minot in uh, parts of North Dakota. Here's the European model. We'll have a new one coming in after this video goes live. And you can see our storm clipping through here, taking a farther north track than the ones that we dealt with over the last couple of weeks. Remember, our storms were dropping down through Iowa into Illinois and into West Virginia. Now they've moved northward by five, six, seven hundred miles. And uh, we're seeing barer and barer grounds here around and north of the Ohio River. And we're seeing more snow falling farther north across Ontario, northern New England or so. And not a lot of lake effect with this. More These clippers are, are being replaced with warmer air behind them. So the track has shifted substantially. We could see a little bit of rain Monday night into Tuesday, but no ice to really be concerned with for most of this area of the Great Lakes and the uh, mid-Ohio Valley and the Kentucky and Tennessee region here Monday night into Tuesday. And then as we head into Christmas Eve day, it's going to be very quiet, I would say, across most of the country once we get east of the Rockies. And it will be warm as well. Same goes for Thursday. We don't see a whole lot going on right after Christmas, so maybe a, a little bit of wintry weather over northern New England and eastern Canada. Most of our weather, though, will be across the west. And then yet another system scrapes through here, the Great Lakes, into New England. That seems to be a repetitive pattern. And then there's a possibility it could turn colder for a few days uh, next weekend and leading up just before New Year's. But that shot of cold could be pretty quick, and we may bounce right back before the next storm becomes an issue. So right now, I would not bet on any kind of major winter weather over the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, certainly not the south and probably not the east coast uh, from New York City and Connecticut on southward. The, the setup really isn't good for that to happen. 
We'll take a look at rainfall totals in the west, and this is where our problems are going to be here. You can see fairly heavy amounts of rain moving into northern California overnight into tomorrow. We could see over three inches of rain in some spots. We get a little bit of a lull, and then Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, central southern California, lots of rain coming, maybe three or even more inches of rain. Uh, this is a model average, so there could certainly be higher totals uh, coming for some of these locations, maybe even six inches in a few spots. And uh, then we see a little bit less towards the weekend, but a lot of rain will fall uh, over the next uh, week or so. We could see amounts uh, close to a foot up against the foothills of California, six inches on the north coast and three to six in the L.A. basin here over the next six or so days. The pack northwest could see a few inches of rain as well. There'll be heavy mountain snow to go along with that, especially this weekend, but more snow over the mountains of Oregon, Idaho and the Teton range. And then we start to see that snow dropping farther south in California and the mountains north of L.A. are going to see a fair amount of snow by the time we get to Wednesday night and Thursday. So a white Christmas there in the mountains of Southern Cal. We will have probably some winter storm warnings in effect by the time we get to the middle of next week. So that is something to look forward to in the east. This is not super exciting. We don't see any major storms anytime soon right through Christmas week. It doesn't line up with the cold, so just not a whole lot to be super excited about in the weather business. So that's good news for travel, I would say. Uh, we do have light snow coming through here uh, Monday night into Tuesday. A few inches will be possible. Even into New England, Boston, Connecticut, Rhode Island, southern Maine, New Hampshire, you'll see a little bit of snow here. That moves out. And then the next storm could bring us some light snowfall as well around and just after Christmas. But really no possibilities through next weekend of any substantial amounts of weather uh, as far as snow goes. Really the rare thing is the amount of heat that is building from Texas on north uh, we are going to see records start to fall early next week. Monday, we look at record highs in Denver, as well as back around Phoenix. I know that got cut off, but 70s to low 80s into the Texas panhandle. And then the number of records continues to climb. Arkansas, Oklahoma, 70s, low 80s in parts of Texas. That is uh, for the 23rd, the 24th, even more records all the way up to South Dakota and Wyoming. And then Christmas Day, this is rare. Uh, we could see over 20, maybe 30 record high set in the central United States as we get well into the 60s in Nebraska, Iowa, and Illinois, 70s in St. Louis, and 80s in Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, I know some people actually enjoy that. Me, I would love a cold Christmas, but we don't need a repeat of uh, 2022 either. Uh, after Christmas, still pretty warm on Friday, and then we may start to cool off a little bit after that. Low temperatures as well. Christmas Eve, 60s in Tulsa and Dallas. Record low minimums, 50s near 60 in Evansville, Paducah, and St. Louis as well. Looking farther along to the north and east. Whoops, I already gave it away here, but uh, we do see record warmth expanding on Christmas Day into the Western Carolinas to Indianapolis. It'll be pushing 70 in Fayetteville, low 70s in Atlanta and Columbia, mid 70s down to the I-20 corridor. The day after could be even warmer. So Friday next week, we could see 70s around Richmond, Virginia and Raleigh and all the way uh, down into parts of the deep south and uh, record low minimums as well, 40s and 50s, all the way up to the Mason-Dixon line as well. And I don't think we're setting records all the way down in Florida, but it will stay mild for you as well. Um, cool nights ahead, but it will start to warm up as we get towards the middle of next week. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day looking beautiful in Florida with daytime highs in the upper 70s and low 80s. That will be great for those who have travel plans or who live, of course, in Florida. Looking ahead after Christmas, uh, we do see on some of our models the PNA is going to try to go to neutral or even slightly positive. This will allow more substantial cold to potentially set up in the southeastern United States just before New Year's, but it's not a great chance of widespread cold coming down. This is not a huge set up for wintry weather, but certainly colder temperatures could return around the 29th and 30th. So early the week leading up to New Year's Day. Uh, also, if we uh, take a look at the NAO, that goes negative. So that will mean uh, higher pressure over Greenland allows colder air to come down into the northeast. So we will definitely see that cold air getting blocked into the eastern United States. Uh, this will not play out for the deep south or for the central United States. This will be more of an eastern United States. But uh, those of you who live in the Carolinas and southeast, just keep an eye on this. 
Uh, right now, I'm not predicting any kind of winter storm signal. I don't see that happening, but uh, we could see colder temperatures uh, filter in in a couple of waves here. So uh, the near record warmth we're going to see around Christmas and just after will eventually get wiped out again and will return to near to below average temperatures. But really, that's all I can promise. Looking at storm chances right now beyond six, seven days is not really something that we can skillfully predict. So we're going to wrap it up here. A fairly short video, but I appreciate everybody's time. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas holiday. I'll try to get back on here before the new year, but it may not be until after New Year's. And I do want to leave you all with some Christian encouragement. I am a Christian, and um, I don't know about you all. I haven't been on here as much because I have been dealing with, still dealing with some mourning in my family. I lost my stepdad about a month ago. And uh, my sister-in-law's mother's not doing well either, unfortunately. And, and, and it's been a time of weeping for us. It's been a difficult Christmas uh, for a lot of us in the family. Um, but I do turn to God and um, I ask him just to, to bless me. And uh, if you're one of those that is dealing with sadness around this time of the year, just know that you're not alone. Uh, this is a time of joy. This is a season that even if you are not a Christian believer, I hope you have joy and have time with your family. Um, but if you are a Christian, it's very easy to rejoice in the Lord and celebrate the birth of Jesus. Uh, but it's also very difficult for a lot of us who have lost, lost loved ones. And uh, it is a time of weeping, I know, for us. And um, I just encourage you to do what Paul says, and that is to weep with those who weep. Uh, for me, I've been uh, processing grief uh, going back to some times when I was a little younger and was involved in in choral music and sang in some groups. I've actually been doing some songwriting. Um, I sing in my praise team in my church and uh, I've been arranging and writing some original music and it helps me process grief. And um, some of the words in, in uh, the, the song that I've been working on, um, oops, not that one, but <laughs> uh, just the song that I'm working on. Uh, there was a lady who wrote a poem called When Tears Fall at Christmas. And, and uh, I asked her if I could put it to music and I adapted it a bit, but um, just the final line of it is we don't stop their tears at Christmas. We all weep for this is love. We all weep together because we care. And um, the greatest part about being in a body of other believers is that we do care for each other. Uh, we have our differences, but we do care. Uh, now I've got to find three other people to sing with me because I can't do the top lines and I struggle with the tenor line, especially up here. I'm more of a bass, but um, I do love to sing and I love acapella music and if you love to sing too, let's let's hook up sometime. So anyway, I appreciate you all joining me here and listening to that little ending, but um, just know that you are loved and God loves you. And I pray that you have a, a safe and healthy holiday season. And I do appreciate you joining me here on this Saturday afternoon. God bless you.